Hello there. Welcome to the Red Devils Den. If you saw my thumbnail, you should be cringing. I'm cringing. Enios has released to the to the to the media to the public that Gareth Southgate is one of their three top managerial replacements for Eric Ten Hag. Now this is shocking. I know that I know that Sir Jim is wanting to implement a pro-English, pro-British regime at Manchester United, which I do not mind at all. But the fact that all these rumours are coming out from the club, that they're already looking at a manager to come in to replace Eric Ten Hag, is just absolutely astonishing. Um, and the fact that Gareth Southgate has been mentioned in there with Graham Potter and De Zerbi, I'm thinking to myself, what is going on here? Why is Gareth Southgate being mentioned? Like, I know he has he done a great job with England. I guess in the in the comments, if you're British or wherever you are from the world and you've been supporting England in international football, could you please drop in the comments what he's done with English football? ever since he's taken charge of it and why this should be enough for Manchester United to want to get him to come and be the manager. The, the scary thing about this is that when is it going to happen? Is it going to happen while the season is happening? Because Eric Ten Hag, we're told, has three games left. If he loses Everton, Brentford and Liverpool, that's, that, that's, that's it for him. So we're told. Then does that mean that a new manager comes in straight away? Or do we have an interim? Is Darren Fletcher? Is Solskjaer going to come back? Who knows? We do not know. The scary thing is, is that if Gareth Southgate comes in, he is a great guy. Um, many people have enjoyed the way he has coached England and managed England. Um, in the way he presents himself. In the way that he supports the players that he picks. We've seen that with Jordan Henderson, Harry Maguire, Calvin Phillips. He really has his, I wouldn't like to call it favorites, but he has a system where he picks players that he trusts, he knows will put in a shift for him, which I don't mind. Many people have said he's a really, really cool guy. Um, he, in his interviews, he's really collected, really calm. Um, he knows how to say the right thing. He's never throwing any of his players under the bus. Uh, which is always a good thing, I think, um, if, if, if you look at it like that. As a Manchester United manager, is realistically, is he the manager to take Man United back to the top? Is he the manager that is going to bring Manchester United the former glory of Sir Alex Ferguson days? In my personal opinion, I do not think so. But in my personal opinion, I do not really think, unless we see it, that Graham Potter or De Zerbi can do that. But... I do understand that Ineos, Sir Jim, Sir David Brailsford, Omar Barada, and maybe Dan Ashworth are looking at creating a structure above the manager, which I don't necessarily think the manager will be that involved in. I say that because if you look at a team like Brighton, the structure that Brighton have built is very much the top, the top form of the club. So the CEO, the sporting director, those people make all the decisions in terms of scouting, in terms of recruitment, in terms of who they buy. And you'll notice that that specific structure requires a specific manager. And that those managers in that structures don't necessarily have the biggest say on transfers. Like, I'll give you the perfect example. With Anthony, Eric Ten Hag wanted Anthony and the club went and got him. Eric Ten Hag wanted Casemiro. And the club went and got him. With this new structure coming in under Enios with Sir Jim and his company that he's bringing in. By company, I mean the people that he's going to surround himself with. That structure is not going to be like that anymore. I think the manager might have a 15 to 20% say and the rest of it will be the board. So there won't be a thing of, I want Anthony at all costs. Okay, Eric, here's 89 million pounds. Go get your player. It's not going to be like that anymore. It's going to be recruitment based. And it's definitely going to be a similar, if not the same model as Brighton, which makes sense as to why they're looking at managers like Gareth Southgate, Gareth, Gareth, 
Gareth Southgate, Graham Potter, and Roberto De Zerbi. That That is why they're looking at those sort of managers. Those are managers that, if you think about it realistically, do not cause any trouble in the media. They're very, very good at speaking. They don't throw their clubs under the bus ever. And they're pretty much going to come into the club, see the structure, and they're going to do, and they're going to make work with what they're given, which will be, I think, decent players. Um, and that's why I think Graham Potter, Gareth Southgate, and Deserve are being mentioned. Um, of the three, let me know in the comments who you would choose, if you support Man United or not. Who, of those three, who would you choose? Um, in my honest opinion, I would probably go for Graham Potter. My second choice would be De Zerbi and my last choice would be Southgate. Uh, that's all I'm going to say on that matter for now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on what you think about this Gareth Southgate story and the other two managers as well because those are who we link to. The next thing on the agenda is Eric Ten Hag has three games left. What that means is he's got three games to prove that he gets to stay in this job. Now, this is the thing. Is this purely based on winning? Does he have to win all three games? Or can he draw two, win one? Can he win two, draw one? Can he win two, lose one? Well, what's going on here? Because we were just being told three games. Eric, you've got three games left. If you mess these three games up, you're gone. Now, there's two, there's two sides to this. Number one. If he goes on and he wins all three of those games, do we just click on to the next three games? Like, if, if so, if he wins, we, we progress in the FA Cup, we win those three games, then there's going to be a new story. Eric, these are the next three games you have to win. Like, is it going to be a game to game or every three games we look at it again? Because if he does go on a winning streak, do we just forget about it and say, okay, Eric's here to stay? If he goes on a losing streak, do we go, okay, Eric's here to leave? Um... What exactly is it? And I, I need your help on this because what exactly is it? Are we just going three games at a time? So when we get to the three games and he's won all of them, then we go, okay, the next three games. So if we get to the three games and he loses all of them, then we say, okay, bye-bye, everyone. Uh, it was good knowing you. This is really, really confusing. And the fact that we're talking about this and the season is still on, we kind of still do have a chance to get to get top four, kind of. We're 11 points off Aston Villa in, in fourth. It is doable, but it will be very, very tough. I also think that the fact that the, if we go and get rid of Eric Ten Hag, what's happening? Is it an interim? I mentioned Darren Fletcher, Solskjaer. Is, is, is Gary Neville going to come um, and be in charge for the last few months? What's going to happen if Eric Ten Hag, after that Liverpool game, we're done? After the Brentford game, we're done. What, 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 what happens after that? Is is Darren Fletcher coming in? Are we just going to have, I don't know, Steve McLaren sitting in, in the dugout? What's going to happen? It's going to be a complete disruption of the season, which possibly could work. We've seen what happened with interim managers except Ranić. We saw what happened when Oli came in. There was a huge bounce and we went on a fantastic run. So the interim manager sometimes is a good thing. I just fear that the problem is we're going to be stuck in a place again where a manager is sacked midway through the season and that's all that gets said about it. Thank you so much, Eric. Bye-bye. Good luck. We appreciate your time, but it's over for now. And looking back on it in a very, very serious manner, I think that it could disrupt the whole season. We might miss out on top four. We might get top four. We might miss out on top four if Eric stays. We might get top four if Eric stays. You never really know. But the problem is someone in that club has got to come out and say that we're sticking with Eric Ten Hag till the end of the season. No one's doing that. All we're getting is story after story about the manager that Manchester United wants to get. So I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Let me know. If Eric Ten Hag should go after these three games, if he loses all three of them, should he go? If he loses all three of them, should he stay? Um, if he wins them, do we stick with him past the summer or do we look at an interim manager now? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.